And let's discuss my two cents with the 49ers, man. So, going into this week of free agency, we went from getting a couple of big name signings into signing some bargain players. You know, you get them at the grocery outlet, you get them at the dollar store, you get them at the 99 cent store, you know, those type of signings. So, you get a lot of these prove it contracts with the low risk, high reward type signings. You add some debt pieces and you may lose some guys in free agency, but you gain a lot of comp picks. You start to develop your own talent. That's what keeps a team from competing. They compete in every year. And that's what you can ask for for a football team is to compete year in and year out. So you bring in guys like uh, Ross Welly, which I don't know why we brought him back. There was opportunities that we could have sign Austin Hooper maybe his price was a little bit more than Dwelly maybe that made sense why we can go that route with Dwelly because we know him pretty well but I just thought he was a guy you could replace like why should we be excited about bringing back somebody who gives you a couple of plays here and there and then disappears and doesn't get opportunities it's kind of mind-blowing then you go with Miles Hartsfield who's a under the radar signing that nobody knows about except Carolina Panther fans and all the other people. It's like, we don't know what to expect from him, but he played a lot of snaps, has a lot of experience under Steve Wilkes. So it made a lot of sense to bring him in. And I think that was the guy that Steve Wilkes wanted to bring in in the first place, because if nobody was going to sign the guy from the Panthers, if the Panthers didn't decide to bring him in, they were going to go after him, so it made sense to get him because of special teams and the versatility dip. So that was kind of interesting. And then the one signing that stood out to me was the John Feliciano signing. It, it caught my attention. It, he adds some quality depth, and he replaces what Daniel Brunskill does because Daniel Brunskill was a versatile player. He can play center, guard, and tackle, you name it, and he signed with the Titans, so that was kind of a – underrated loss in my opinion because he played a lot of different spots on our old line but bringing in a veteran like John Feliciano who has a lot of starting experience and last season he did play he started most of the games at center which is viable so he played guard he played all the positions except the right tackle spot so that was an intriguing signing that was the most underrated pickup by far I thought we needed to add some depth there, and we addressed that by replacing Brunskill's spot. So I think that's what the role is. He's going to replace what Daniel Brunskill does. He's going to be a guy who just steps in at guard, center, or potentially tackle. One or the other. He'll be one of those swing players that comes off the bench or maybe potentially compete for a starting job. But um, that's the way I look at it. Mm. And then today, looking at the signing. We decided to bring in somebody like Austin Bryant, which he was visiting the Niners, and I think there was some very strong interest there. So they wanted to check him out. I think he did his physical, and they came away impressed, and they decided to sign him. What really stood out about this signing was he was one of those guys that people said was, like people were thinking, like, you know, the Lions fans and other people in the NFL were just saying that this guy – Seems like a major disappointment. He can't stay healthy. He hasn't produced up to the talent that he was supposed to be because he was a sleeper in the draft. But there's some talent you can work with. I mean, Chris Kosarek sees something in the kid that I think some teams would want to take a chance on. And maybe that low-risk type deal can pay off. You know, like the low-risk, high-reward type move because you don't know what he can be. His issue coming into the NFL was staying healthy he only had one solid production year which was 2021 where he had four and a half sacks so that was a, a ceiling that was potential right there last year he played some snaps but didn't produce up to the previous season so there's some there's some there's some talent there's some there's some potential so what really stood out about him was his get-off. He has that quick get-off, like something about that quick get-off, and he gets to the quarterback if he has to. I mean, he gets the pressure, he gets past the linemen, and he just has some knack on getting to the quarterback. 
but it's very unfinished product right there. So that's something that Chris Casera can work with. So that kind of seemed like the most underrated pickup. You get these, uh, the interesting part was we go from a guy like a premium, like a Javon Hargrave into the Dollar General signings of Colin Farrell, which we gave him a $2 million type deal to prove himself. And you sign a guy that he played in Clemson with, like Austin Bryant. These are two of the players who won the national championship in Clemson against Alabama at Levi Stadium not that long ago. Those guys were, like, very dominant in college. They produced a lot of pressures and hits. Their defense was lights out, bro. That year in college football, their defense was fucking dominant, bro. They had their defense on line talent, bro. They were all good, bro. You had, what's his name, Wilkins, and you had uh, Dexter Lawrence. You had Colin Farrell. And Austin Bryant on the other side. But we got half of those guys on our roster. But they're playing as backups. So that's intriguing. It's Chris Kacerik sees something in these guys. So I'm intrigued by this. I want to see how they pan out to be. But as far as my thoughts, man, I think we're just going to keep on going with the bargain shopping. And then until the draft, you might see some trade up spots to where maybe we can move up to get a draft prospect that we're very high on and then maybe as soon as after the draft you'll see some veteran free agents have their market value drop down a little bit and you might get them on a very cheap deal because they just probably don't care at this point they want to go play and they want to have another season to play football so i think that's where you can take a chance on them and as far as the other needs the kicker is yet to be addressed, but it will be pretty soon. We're going to get a kicker. And the one question mark that everybody's wondering, is the door still open on Robbie Gold? He hasn't been signed anywhere else, and there's no other options out there. There's there's some guys in free agency that we can definitely consider signing, but then maybe the Niners have a different approach. Maybe they like what they've seen in the... NFL draft maybe they feel like they can go bring in a rookie kicker and he can make an immediate impact for this Niners uh, special teams and maybe that guy is there we just have to wait in the draft to see when he's available or whenever we can sign him as an undrafted free agent so we'll see how that plays out but don't be surprised if we can't come away with signing whatever these kickers we can get if it comes down to Robbie Gold taking something reasonable there's a good chance he may return so it's always been never say never until he gets signed. So he's still available, and it's not out of the question. It wouldn't surprise me if we had to eventually sign Robbie Gold, but his market value might be a little cheaper, so he might have to take a reasonable contract to come and play another season. So it's definitely not out of the question. So we'll see about it. But as always, guys, that's just my thoughts about it. As far as the overall grade, I give it a B. We still got some other possible needs. I think we're going to still go that cheap route for a while. But at the moment, I think we've been okay. We've been solid. So that's my two cents, and I'll keep you all posted. And go Niners.